Montreal. Montreal. Who's that? Oh, I think it's Mr. Lewis Hamilton. I think he's got something to say. <laughs> he posted this when, like a few a few days ago? Play it. We could have been a good couple. <laughs> We could have had something special. But you one crazy ass bitch. <laughs> okay, no, no, Danny, no, you, yeah, get one, you get yeah, one play. Don't That's let it play it. again. <laughs> The, this guy, okay, so we, we went to Montreal last weekend uh, to see the race, but there was one day we were staying together at this one uh, loft, and Danny must have played that on repeat for what, way over a half hour? Please. <laughs> It was more like an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was showing no signs of stopping. <laughs> no, hey, we all had our we all had our things, right? It, yeah. wor it worked. Oh, yeah. right? I annoyed the shit Ab out absolute. of both of you guys. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. absolute So Absolute I think uh, F1 has changed for me forever now. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! After that weekend, it, now I I get it. I get it. And I remember telling you before uh, during the weekend where I was I was saying something like you know it's not just the cars, but that that stops people from getting into F1. But like you really need to know the drama between everyone because there's a ton of it there's yeah. so much everyone's shit talking each other even the news reporters are just i don't know you still don't see that kind of shit in hockey everyone's just like oh it was a respectable goal and uh you know kudos to him and this one's like no nah, fuck that guy yeah. <laughs> fuck that guy in particular that's because all you need for hockey is a ball of rubber and a stick yeah that's true or a disc and, and a bit of a net yeah something, a bit. That's something in you could use two rocks as a net doesn't, yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> this, this weekend kind of changed everything for me too but oh really in the complete opposite way oh no like starting to anyway Yeah, that race was boring. Yeah, <laughs> it would. Like one is going in the wrong direction, but that that, that and, and, and that oh, is what a lot of people saying. More crashes. That's what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> no, they're they're not gonna crash if they just keep uh, focusing on saving fuel. Yeah, uh, that's so the, that's the thing. Going too slow to crash. Oh, okay. not pushing at all. Those tires stick and they go around the corners. Yeah. I and mean, that, and and that is part of the problem, right? Like that's that's that that's a pr the big problem that the that, that the big strategy group was supposed to deal with, or or is supposed to bring ideas forth to deal with that. Uh, but more on that coming up. Uh, this is the Flat Out Fever Formula One podcast. Oh, yeah, mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> intros, names and shit. Flatoutfever.com, Twitter, YouTube, subscribe, Facebook. hit subscribe. Yeah, all the all the fun. Follow things. us on the Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I'm some nice. dude. Here's another dude. Yeah. There's another dude. Some I'm the third some dude. guy over there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and 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 we're doing this uh, and we had a fantastic week. And despite despite what Danny said and despite yeah. what I think I think it's, it's one of the, it's one of those things that, you know, we will keep watching F1. It's gonna it's gonna oh, it's gonna get better. I'm not gonna stop watching because no, the one race was boring. Yeah. But <laughs> don't worry about that. But 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 the Canadian Grand Prix did did point out a, a few things that are, are really you really need to work on them. Yeah, me? Well, no, no, everybody. <laughs> the, the, the powers that be, they, they they really need to focus on 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 working on it. And and I I also want to talk in depth. Well, not in depth, but I want to talk about that for, uh, for a little bit. But should we do a recap of the the shinier parts of the weekend, though? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Montreal itself. Holy shit! What a great fucking city. I told you. Um, first time for me there, and it was. Fucking phenomenal. Is that Expos? <laughs> Expos 67? <laughs> no, um, the, the baseball team. That's the one I meant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What the fuck do I know? Well, Montreal used to have a baseball team <laughs> yeah. a long time ago. I think. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That, that was their, their thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was the Expo, but I was clearly... Well, I think, that, I think that's why they guarded their name. That's right. Oh, I said it. Expo 67. All right, it did. Yeah. I fucked up. <laughs> Ma in many ways than one. <laughs> many more ways. Um, great city, great atmosphere, yeah. right? Holy yeah. moly! I, I mean, uh, this is something you said, but it was like it's sweet how much the city embraces that sport. There, like streets were cut up, like shut down, like maybe many, that's, many streets, many streets were, but like Big everyone streets. had F 1 things going on, stuff like that. I mean, it happens in Toronto for hockey. If it 
gets a playoff season, but that's mm-hmm. it. It's nothing like this, nothing like that. And everyone was very, very friendly. Yeah, it's more of an international event. Too. Yeah, yeah, There's a lot of people there. Yeah, it's 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 so it's, many people. There. It's, it's a yeah, it's a it's a world sport, mm-hmm. and 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 they are aware that a lot of people are gonna be not only coming to the city. Mm-hmm. But there's gonna be some attention put in the city as well, just from mm. you know the camera crews around town and whatnot, and and people in the media, yeah, and 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 the stuff like that. So so they fully embrace that. They fully recognize the potential that that has, and 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 I'm sure that it was it was even for me at one point when I, when I was very little, and I'm sure many people around the world only really know about Canada or or they only really hear about Canada once a year, and it's right. During the it's, Canadian it's Car- that. Grand Prix, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's it's it, this is true because what else is Canada? Canada, well, I mean, I guess Canada has been more involved in world affairs as of recently, but yeah, with the Olympics, uh, yeah, last week the Pan Am Games are in Toronto <laughs> okay, in uh, two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but there was a time, man. Like I'm telling you, when I was growing up, like I just I I was vaguely aware of Canada. I knew a couple of things here and yeah. there. Well, you knew it was north of the States. Yeah, that, that's about it. I was aware of what some leaf in the flag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and once a year, you heard about the Grand Prix. I, guess I was born like 15 minutes from here, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it's, 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 it was a fantastic yeah. atmosphere. And really, I mean, it's, I could talk and talk the, the length of this podcast about why and how and, 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 and the inner workings of it. But well, that's it, what we're gonna do, right? Well, but <laughs> that's, that's why we're here, right? No, but it's <laughs> it, 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 it wouldn't be pointless. You have to go. You have to go. Yeah. If 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 you have a chance, if you're around here, if you listen to this podcast, and um, I think most of the people who listen to the pod- this podcast are in Canada, if not North America. Yeah, you have to come to the Grand Prix, and the people, yeah. and the people that um, haven't because they think that oh, it's too expensive or, or oh, I don't know if I'm yeah. going to be able to afford grandstand seats. You know what? Just come. Do GA. We did GA. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. You, yeah. There's There are some pr- pretty good spots you can still see yeah. everything. You get TV, you get sound, you get comment, local commentary. Right. There's no Brundle there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no Brundle, but... Well, except that guy behind us during the race, some guy had a headphone in his ear. Oh, sick. and he's streaming the BBC content co- commentary <laughs> through his phone <laughs> to his ear. Yeah, it's what amazing, a bad, yeah, badass. Yeah, badass. Yeah, he helped us out a few times because like, what's going on? He's like, oh yeah, get... <laughs> <laughs> here's all the team radio. I wouldn't mind uh, doing a grandstand, like. Uh, yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing, but not for... next year. Yeah, why not? Because next year is going to be bad. I think. In terms of F1, everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the last year of this, what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. So it's. I think oh, it's so then be after a, that, year, I think next year is going to be a bit of a throwaway. Oh, really? Kind yeah. of, probably. Yeah. Come back to that. In term- point, okay, but, right. But yeah, I'll go. I'm going to the race. But yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I want to get up in the grandstands, man. Seeing some of the pictures and yeah, all that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A selfie stick is something <laughs> <laughs> for the GoPro. Not but grandstand, and, and also, yeah. um, like, it'd be it'd be nice to actually be able to, because uh, because we did um, at the end of the race. We did go and jump in the track and did a bit of a walk around, but mm. there was no way that we were getting there for the podium ceremonies and whatnot. Yeah, so right. it, it, it would be nice to have a shorter walk to that. I mean, that yeah. that, that would be huge. I mean, but yeah, exactly like you said. Yeah, not 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 next year, twenty seventeen though. <laughs> the thing is though, like, well, whatever. Sitting on that grandstand uh, podi- uh, near the podium, near the front straight, near the first corner. Yeah, co- like the seat costs like what we spent for the whole weekend. Oh no way! Yeah, like yeah. all of our shit. accommodations, travel, going to bars, oh drinking 104 beers, <laughs> all the all the poutine and eggs we ate. <laughs> yeah, pretty did, pretty much, and that and the that, egg, and that beer is statistics were incredible yeah. this weekend. And and that and that is what that is what a lot of people look at and they say, oh, if the yeah, one ticket oh, is shit. that much, but yeah, you don't have to be there. Yeah. Trust me, you don't have to be there. To to, to 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 be able to fully absorb the the action of the Grand Prix, even you you yeah. said that just just being where we were in general admission, it was great. Totally, and yeah. you can. Where did we pay for the weekend? Like seventy eight bucks or something for the our uh, tickets. We, we, well, we, we did because we got it on a, on a crazy deal that that they had like way in advance. But yeah. even the, you, they I got made one hundred twenty bucks February fourteenth for... Valentine's Day ticket Ooh. deal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're gonna do this next year, but watch out if if you if you aren't subscribed to if you think that you might be coming to a Grand Prix, and this might be a good advice to anybody, mm-hmm. really, regardless. Uh, go to the go to the website for the track, mm. and this is what what I what yeah, I did. That's where we found the deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go to the website for the track and sign up to their stupid spam emails. You know, the the sign up to their mailing list, 
Uh, if you know that you're going to be coming there, say, next year, why not? Just pay attention. And every once in a while, they might send you an email one day saying, like, you know what? Just today, tickets 50% it might off. be a Valentine's mm-hmm. Day yeah. special. You don't yeah. have to hold hands when you punch in your credit card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Unless you want to. <laughs> um, um, something I wanted to touch on was uh, how fucking cool just the whole venue was. Not even the venue, the, the, the island. Uh, in terms of, like, this would never happen in Toronto. Never ever in mm. the, in the sense of like Again, a lot of hey. people might not know the track is on an island in the yeah. middle of the St Lawrence River. Yeah, which is fucking cool as shit. <laughs> uh, but you could bring your own booze and your fo- own food, and that's cool as shit. Yeah. Um, I think that takes like uh, I think it goes back to like that old world view where it's like, nah, just have a good time. You know, there's yeah. no stupid bureaucracy about it all. It's yeah. just it's really they, crazy where we live here how it's how everything is run like that. Yeah, it, no it is, food, no yeah, beer. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, and that's another one that people might be thinking like, "Oh, you know, this is the the, the, the cost of the ticket and then I get there and I'm going to spend all day at the tracks and I have to buy their beers and buy their food." Right. You can if you want to. They do have stands. That's and, a good point. They uh, should advertise that you yeah. can bring you we brought a cooler full of sandwiches and beer. Yeah. 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 Cuz they were charging like 8 or 9 dollars for a uh, Whatever shitty candy beer they're trying to sell. That's sleeping. Uh, which, which is, let's which be honest. Had. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had a, yeah, I had a <laughs> sip of a sample. No, no, you had a whole bottle. You remember Mike bought, Mike bought us uh, a bottle of Sleeman? Oh, I guess I, I drank all the other ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drank all the other ones first. Is that after the Dos Equis and all that? Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Hugo? Thanks for that. Oh, yeah. yeah we, met, we met some friendly Mexican. That gave us beer. Who, yeah, who go from Mexico? Just because just we were dignified enough to talk to him, really. I mean, that's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> we were also the coolest people there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you, um, you just wanted to sit on a grandstand. Yeah. Our yeah. petite grandstand. <laughs> <laughs> and never realized its full potential. Yeah. Wow. Sorry to everybody that was waiting for that to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool stuff all around. I mean, yeah, yeah. And the track. Like you said, it is. And, and and I'm trying to remember just f- from your point of view every th- every time that you said something like oh like this is cool about that yeah. I tried to remember about my first reaction too when I went yeah. and it is it is cool it is super cool it, yeah. it, just just being there it, it, b- besides the fact that it's a freaking F1 track yeah uh, and and you get you do get to see a lot on especially on the Thursday that free day mm-hmm. you do get to see <clears throat> a lot of it. But also the, the 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 island itself, yeah, it's a park. It's the same island that if if anybody's familiar with. That's where they have Oshaga. Mm-hmm. If you if you've heard, oh, about, that's yeah. where it is. That's where it is. Oh, yeah. fuck, the Montreal yeah. Jazz Festival. Oh, yeah, they had to gamble. The casinos. The right casinos there. there. Casino's sitting in the, the same middle island. of the track. Oh, damn. Yeah, right beside that, uh, the the island of the Grand Prix. The the I think it's called uh, Ile Saint Helene or something like that. Um, there is uh, or no, I'm thinking whatever. Just. It, Right beside it, there's another island that you have to pretty much go t- go through to get to the Grand Prix. Because uh, if you, even if you're if you're coming in via transit, the the metro station, the subway station, oh, right. is on the other island. Yeah, and also like we did, just walking there across the bridge, you go in through the other island first, and then to uh, to the Grand Prix. There's there's yeah. a bridge. It's kind of hard to, when you're there. It's kind of hard to tell that you're just. Yeah, that it's two islands, but that other island, the, the smaller island, um, also has that sick park with the with the tower, the Levi Tower. Oh, <laughs> yeah. there's a there was a tower that we went and saw after Thursday. Yeah, it was yeah, Thursday yeah. after we checked yeah. up the track. Yeah, and um, that's where uh, Javier said that's where they make the Levi's jeans. Yeah, and shoot him off the top. Yeah, out of, <laughs> out of cannons. <laughs> no, but it's, it, it 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 is a cool and 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 the city. I mean, I. I would say that Montreal is probably one of my favorite cities in the whole world yeah. that I've ever been to. Yeah, uh, it's like a, I don't it's, think I, I don't think I, I don't think I would like to live there yeah. all year round. Now they're driving as <laughs> fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's very unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> but to visit for sure, and and it's cool, and and uh, it's not it's not outrageous. You know what I mean? Like even though even the expensive places that we went to it was still pretty good. Um, booze is cheap to get at yeah. grocery stores. Yeah. Way better than Ontario. Way better than a lot of places. Um, so in that uh, in 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 that light, I think I think yeah, Montreal gets points for that. Yeah, points. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I think I could live there for sure. It's awesome. I would. I could probably get used to it, but I think uh, uh, I don't know. I don't I'd, know what's not to like. What, what do you mean like? Uh, I I don't. Can't I don't, be just too much of a good thing. Don't want to have to learn French. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, that's that's one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess I could put up with that. Uh, yeah. Learn more French. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't live there uh, only because anywhere else I would go would just seem that much 
tamer. Yeah, it'd just be lame. <laughs> like, if I would live in Montreal, I was like, I'm going to go to Toronto. It's like, oh, wait, this place is a cesspool of bureaucracy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> this city is too serious. The driving is definitely worse here. No. Driver? I, I'd rather drive in Toronto than Montreal. What? Yeah, any day of the week. Uh, sure, the, the 401 is a fucking clusterfuck just waiting to happen. But <laughs> What about the gardener, the DVP? Oh, I don't take that because I'm not crazy. <laughs> I, I know my roots. Yeah. I know how to get out of the city. Only because I live here. <laughs> if I didn't. Yeah, uh, that's, I mean, it's, but I mean, it's actually sad. driving in Montreal wasn't too bad, but it, you really got to be on your game. Yeah. You got to know where you're going because everything ends. One-way streets connect. I don't know. It, yeah, it's, 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 it's laid out like an older city, like yeah. an old school. But the old, but Montre- think- old Montreal is amazing. You don't have to... Think not like GPS though, where you're like, oh, I have to turn on this street and this right. street. And I'm this sure street. if I live, you just there, go I... in the direction and just keep following arrows. Till yeah, you, till you're pointing. You no, no, eventually get to the street that you need to. Yeah, yeah. Montreal, awesome. Yeah, Montreal was awesome. Uh, good food. Oh. Yeah, they have they have good food. Oh, yeah. Danny, yeah. how many poutines did you eat? <laughs> Four or five pounds. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Combined poutine. <laughs> Holy shit. I've never seen someone so obsessed with getting poutine. He's like, ah, I just... And you, like, finished one, and you're like, ah, I should have got another. <laughs> yeah, I, sh- I, I should have. <laughs> just drown that shit in pepper. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, pepper is great, too. I love it. You can't have enough black you know, pepper. You know another thing that I find that Montreal is maybe unique for, in, in terms of, like, Grand Prix venue or whatever, is that it's... It, it, it's so close to a major city that... It, it lends itself to a, to a lot, like a lot of. I wouldn't even say it's close to the major city. It's, it's in like, it. It's like it's, downtown. Yeah, it's basically it's right downtown. <laughs> it's right on the right in the city. So as soon as you're done with the with the Formula One stuff, you still have time to head home. Uh, you know, maybe like it, you, you will be tired if if yeah. you did something like what we did. Yeah, just all the walking around, whatever. <laughs> go go home. You know, snooze for a little bit, yeah. uh, and then and then go out and and Party. meet some cool people. Yeah, everyone's is, there for F one. Yeah, yeah, and and well, obviously, like if you go to like the 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 main bars and the main strips, yeah, uh, I'm sure there's places where people that are from Montreal that don't like F one and don't <laughs> want to be with that will go to some other places. But yeah. if you go to yeah, like fuck off, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but if 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 you if you go to like the main places uh, in in the main party strips, Just walking around the city, it's easier to tell where the party's going on oh for sure and 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 the and the on those streets that they close they hate they hate they put up stages for free shows or, yeah there's all kinds of free stuff going around uh that's one thing we missed was the music yeah we did we didn't go to we any of the any shows concerts again but mm. yeah next, shoes next year next make year. sure you guys have good shoes <laughs> yeah yeah you know what that's a, that, that's maybe that's an underrated uh, yeah. uh, uh thing to say because made a huge huge mistake. I, I didn't i didn't make a point to tell you i yeah. did i didn't even make a point to bring like nice walking shoes myself <laughs> right so yeah, yeah did I. bring bring some good walking shoes yeah. for sure like i'm still fucked uh, like i, I yeah. don't think i'm out of commission for a few days just but how cool was it amazing and, and amazing. After, even that even our fucking walks there they were long but like we passed some of the coolest shit i've ever seen in my life yeah <laughs> and it was just it was just awesome See, that's why you gotta walk more yeah. yeah well i mean after you know the sixth time i was like okay I, I <laughs> no, just in, in general yeah. yeah just in general yeah yeah and and after you go to the so you're done with your f1 stuff for the day you go you go home maybe you have a meal whatever and then you go out and and do th- like you can do stuff like like what we did. We went and met up with uh, uh then I we went met up with the Reddit crew. Yeah. But before that, we met we met we met some marshals. Ah, yeah, some that track was so marshals. Cool. Those guys that are was, great. Michael, yeah. uh, what's his name? His last name. I got his business card here. Uh, I forgot, but his he goes by uh, his username on Reddit and many other things is PDX Racer. So P- Michael PDX Racer, this shout out is for Ooh. you. He said he was gonna be listening to our podcast. So hello. Up, <laughs> yeah, we no, we had we had a we had a great amount of fun with uh, with the marshals. They yeah, could only those guys are fun, man. It's, yeah, learned a lot. That's they, such a good, they could only a cool life, man. I want to know what what do those guys do for a living? Yeah. <laughs> their, ho- their hobby is to fly around to yeah. marshal races. It's badass. You get yeah. right there on the track wall. We yeah. should. Uh, I think we asked him. We should get him on the podcast. He no, he definitely wants to. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fucking super He's cool. Gonna yeah, and us in. that's gonna. Uh, so yeah, that's that's another thing that's coming up. Uh, well, you know, in the near future, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I suppose uh, we're gonna be talking to uh, to to Mike, who is a race marshal, uh, and maybe uh, one of his buddies about yeah. about how what race marshaling is all about. And we talked to him about that, and they just had they had a lot to say. It, it was him and like a buddy of his joined, and then uh, maybe another one stayed for the, uh, for a few minutes. But 
they just love motorsports so much, and yeah. they and because they do marshalling and and and, and uh, because of what marshalling entails. To get to be a marshal for F1, you have to have previous experience at a, at a, at a high level motorsport. Yeah, and yeah. the way that you get that experience is by doing other like lower level motorsports. So they have to basically work their way, kind of like drivers do, yeah. through the lower categories, <laughs> marshalling. Yeah. And then until they're, they, they have enough experience to marshal at F1. Uh, but because of that, they're just so involved in the yeah. in the in the world of motorsports yeah. as a whole. Obviously, most of them are. Uh, I think the, the ones that we met were American. Uh, there's some British apparently that that do come to Canada. Yeah, I heard uh, a bunch of British accents, especially when we walked around the track after the race. Yeah, I heard a bunch of Brit Brits. Yeah, so so yeah, so Brits I guess would would do the, uh, the same in 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 all around Britain and Europe uh, and Americans, mm -hmm. uh, the, the American marshals. Uh, would do through all the motorsport series. Like I, I heard those guys talking about that IMSA Tudor racing. Have you heard about that? That's like okay. That I, um, I think you, uh, North America used to have like a couple of like big. Um, what are those called? Like like basically like grand touring cars. Um, racing like the way that uh, that they do in in Europe, there used to be a few categories of that where they would race just uh, top level cars, mm -hmm. uh, GT cars like uh, Ferraris, uh, Maseratis, uh, Lamborghinis, but also uh, with American cars too, like so uh, the, the Corvettes in there and whatnot. Um, there were there were several categories that I guess eventually get, they got uh, kind of unpopular. Mm -hmm. So then a couple of years ago they just combined it, or last year or something they combined all those into one mega. Uh, sports car racing series uh, that they call the Tudor Racing Series, mm -hmm. and I, and it, you could find anything from like like I said, a, a Ferrari racing a Corvette, and there's different categories, but they're oh, all shit. racing at once. Yeah, so they they did marshalling there, but they also have. Are you saying two door? Two door. Okay. Uh, no, 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 not two doors, but like the the brand Tudor, like they make watches. Okay. Okay. T U D O R. Can, can, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's what I thought you were saying. Yeah, yeah, Tudor. <laughs> And then I was confused I if you said two door. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but it could have been. It could have been. Yeah, yeah maybe that's the pun. Yeah. <laughs> pun. Um, but they also do and, and things like karting to through all the way to like that Nisa micro racing that we yeah. didn't see, but apparently didn't see hilarious. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and 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 IndyCar. They do IndyCar as well. So you know, good for them. And they yeah. have obviously they have to be involved in all that, and they that's all they do all the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's crazy. Cool. Yeah, cool. I, uh, I loved. I, I I mentioned this to you, but uh, I re to see like there's a real camaraderie among those guys. Like they're a yeah. team, man. Like the they're flaggers. Like, yeah, the flaggers. <laughs> <laughs> they were jokes, at trust me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did not let them go on set. But uh, yeah, it's so cool to see them. Like they were just they were like there. They're like we're doing this together, and I thought that was uh, a super cool thing. Like mm -hmm. a weird. Group of people, and it, and it must cool. the, the the amount of responsibility that that is rested on them, and, oh. and and let's not forget again, they're doing this. They're volunteers. They're not. They don't get paid anything. Yeah. If anything, all they get yeah. uh, from a race weekend is just maybe if they collect a bit of carbon fiber that they can sneak <laughs> in their pockets, or and and the vests that they yeah. give them. But other than that, they're just doing it for the love of the sport. I saw and, and I saw two marshals after the race give their vests to two kids. So oh fuck, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, yeah. do you think it was uh, their fault that Vettel fucking fucked up <laughs> in his qualifying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting this on the marshals. No, he was going like 300. <laughs> yeah, he was no. flying. If you see the video, and I and I saw it again, yeah. like he, there were there were red flags. There was the the, the screen because there, there, there's also little screens. The screens were flashing red. There is no way that he that, that he missed it. And if he missed it. If he uh, they genuinely didn't see those red flags, there's something wrong with him, yeah. not not with the marshals. Yeah, <laughs> Get his eyeballs checked or something. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was it him that was having that problem before? No. no, it was Rosberg. No, that's oh, Rosberg. Rosberg's guy. Oh, really? <laughs> who, better not talk who, who about. Who we're not allowed to. Better not, better not talk about Rosberg too much. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> According to the media, everyone likes to pick on Rosberg. <laughs> Who was uh, was that? Will Buxton that had that tweet. I don't. I, it's like don't. this is uh, this is uh, Rosberg's view, and it's just like the back oh, of oh, Brando. No, uh, Brando. Oh, Brando. Brando tweeted that <laughs> <laughs> the back of, the back of Hamilton's car. That was the shit talking I was talking about. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, like holy fuck. Okay, yeah, okay. I guess that's kosher around here. Oh yeah, Rosberg's German though, and Brando and Hamilton are British, so they got the oh bias going there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know what's cool though? Okay, we didn't we didn't get to see any of the 
this guy uh, pre-show or post-show or anything like that because we were uh, just busy actually being at the track. I yeah. watched a little bit. I watched the uh, I watched Ted's uh, notebook and I watched him interview uh, Bernie Stone. Yeah, oh my that's god, what, that yeah, was, was like that was interviewing hilarious. fucking a vampire. <laughs> it's just like, dude, it's daylight. Are you sure you can be out? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the table breaks. He's like, Ugh. the table did break. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you saw it too. Yeah, I saw. I watched yeah. it on. Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you just pulled that up. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Everything falls into his lap. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. That's what he basically said. He's still sharp. If anyone's doubting that. Yeah. No, he knows. He he he, he sort of knows what he's doing, and, I, and I'm sure that when when we were talking about earlier this year about refueling and all that, it may have been something that he did say to kind of try to push the teams along. Mm-hmm. I, I, okay, we'll get we'll get to that later. But right now, I still want to keep talking about about Canada. Cause Sorry, there's Sorry. another thing that we that we haven't even. Cause, so yeah, so you go. You, if if you need any more encouragement as a listener, if you're out there and you, you haven't gotten out, get, get out. Uh, it can be cheap. You can actually make it work mm-hmm. for cheap, uh, or you know, relatively cheap. Um, don't don't stay at a hotel if you don't want to. Do what Airbnb like mm-hmm. we did. Uh, yeah, that really made it seem like we were visiting a town and not like staying at a hotel. As weird as that sounds, but I mean, like it really felt like yeah, this is our place for a bit. Sick. Wait, okay. Yeah. Cool. It was cool. Yeah. It, it was like our base. Yeah. It was yeah. our <laughs> HQ, man. Yeah. Home base. <laughs> Hotels don't have kitchens and stuff like that. No. Well, they can, yeah. but they often don't. Yeah, yeah, we, enough for what we, we packed did. all these fucking sandwiches and they were yeah. we just eat them. I heard someone like, yo, these guys brought fucking sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. and, I was, and I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were smart. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, I mean, you can, you can, you can do it. You can do it on the cheap. Then you go there. You have a great time at the track because it was fun. Yeah. The support races are cool to see the, yeah. those Ferraris and Nissan Micros that we missed. Uh, I didn't. I did, what? Yeah. <laughs> I did, we were there the whole fucking time. Well, apparently like, we miss Anissa Micros uh, every time. We, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, but but uh, as Spencer, a friend of mine, that Spencer, if you're listening, this is a shout out. Um, he he hadn't gone to F1 ever, uh, and and I I think I convinced him because I, I worked with him in Windsor, and I and I kept telling him like you got to make it out there, like it's 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 incredible, it's phenomenal. He finally made it, and he was like, "Yo, man, like this." I, I think he just didn't expect it. I think he he knew he was gonna have fun. He knew like uh, that 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 it was gonna be great. But when he got there, he's like, "I wish I had done this mm. way earlier." Right. That's what I said my yeah. first time too. Yeah. I've been watching for years too, and live even closer than he does. Yeah, exactly. So you go there, and and but and I because the it's not to go too. It's not th- just the action on track because yeah. it's, it's what's happened later, and yeah. and the city's great, and we, you get to meet. You know, you can just run into these marshals, yeah. or like we did. We had a. Uh, you were not feeling well. Yeah. I, I really feel bad about that. Yeah. Uh, not that I had anything no, to do with didn't. it, but <laughs> I, I feel I, I feel empathy to your pain. Yeah. But uh, you had to leave on uh, when was that? On uh, the Saturday. Saturday, Saturday yeah, night. Saturday night, and then right after you left, we met with. Uh, well, we had the pleasure of of having a, a nice, good talk with Michael Schmidt. Not you. Yeah, not me. Matthias <laughs> Gruner. Yeah, and and, and Toby Gruner. <laughs> Both uh, 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 Toby Gruner, uh, if if you're familiar with uh, uh, if if you're from Reddit, like his posts, AMUS, like yeah, the Green Penguin, yeah, yeah, the Green <laughs> Penguin from AMUS, M- 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 the it's, Green uh, Penguin from Reddit, that's the guy, yeah, exactly. So and 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 his his I guess senior uh, reporter and one of the most senior uh, journalists in up and down in the F one pa- the F one paddock, Michael Schmidt was almost there. Wealth of knowledge from the inside from those guys, and we were just have having a beer with them at a bar. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, you know what I mean. I was starstruck with Michael Schmidt for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh fuck! Was like, Whoa, that guy's on TV and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. F1 TV. Yeah, if if you if you watch uh, any of like the F1 uh, uh, like the the team principals conference, especially the team principals, he's always there at the team principals conferences. If anytime you hear anybody with a uh, with a German accent ask a question, it's usually him. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Crazy. Yeah, he's he's a, a real bona fide journalist, and he had a lot of insight to our stupid questions. That he, yeah, he honestly, was, that was probably the best part of my weekend. These guys are super <laughs> humble. Yeah, and into it, man. I thought and at first I was like, oh, okay, I guess. Like I was at first, I was like, man, I guess we should probably, like, we were talking to them for like twenty minutes. So like, should we leave them alone? But they wanted to they told us stories for like two hours <laughs> oh that's so cool the it closed. seems like they were just like so excited just 
just to talk about F1. Oh, yeah. And yeah. and, 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 and uh, they could tell, obviously, they that we were... Since our enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, exactly. They could tell that we were excited, and that, that sort of got them excited. Yeah. Uh, and, and they weren't, like you said, they, they were humble, and, and, and they weren't, uh, uh, like, snob. Like, they weren't just, above it all. Yeah, they, they weren't above, like, like lowering down, like, and, like, like really, like, like taking ah. time to explain, uh, like, what, what it what is cool about Monza like just hearing it from the guy himself like just talking about Monza just made me like want to go to Monza that yeah. much more um, honestly he didn't uh, he didn't convince me because <laughs> you didn't hear him you were talking something you were talking I heard to Toby. him I heard him <laughs> um, uh, j- it, and, and just l- like I said yeah, any stupid question that we had they, they they took the time to be like you know what maybe actually you're not seeing it the right way because this are you yeah. talking about even like things that the FIA might try to implement? No, just like I like like anything that I, that I say. Like I say something like, "Oh, but this guy's stupid," and then like <laughs> they're, they're like, like, "Hold on, yeah." <laughs> yeah. I moment, I moment, <laughs> Yeah, it was super cool. Yeah, it was fun. But yeah, you can do that. You too can. If you feel like you out there listening. And like, how many pictures did we see on Reddit like the following days of people just like, "Oh, look who I ran into." Yeah, yeah, I saw uh, Chili Science was. This close to me, he walked right past. I was like, "Whoa, man, that's oh. Carlos Sainz." Oh, Danny Rick, we saw Danny Rick in the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we saw him yeah. just under the tra- by the train tracks yeah. by the sh- by the port. Yeah, <laughs> being driven uh, on his way to the yeah. quali, I guess. Yeah, on his way to quali, and we were there. We were right beside him. Big smile. Yeah, I never saw you like so excited. Well, it was just like, like and Danny Rick. Oh, that was Danny Rick. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like shitting his smile. Teeth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was emulating his spirit. <laughs> uh, cool stuff. Um, Ted Kravitz did the podium interview. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> they let him interview uh, Echo Stone and do the interview. Yeah, stepping up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess he he, he, got, he, a, <laughs> he got a lot of airtime. He retired the uh, the sandals and whatever. <laughs> Get some um, respect finally. Who else was uh, at Montreal? Though I mean, it seemed like a lot of uh, big wigs. Did calm down so yeah. it, it, well, all the nice cars, right? Well, that that, but also F one big wigs, but yeah. but also yeah, no, I, celebrities were there too. Like uh, Al Pacino was there and uh, uh, Michael Douglas, but yeah, who cares about that? <laughs> yeah, fuck but yeah, <laughs> cares about those guys. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but more importantly, um, Sergio Marchione was down. That's I was just gonna say that. And go uh, ahead, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, the big wigs. He was down here to talk to Ecclestone, I guess, and talk about. What the fuck's going on? But Eccleston didn't make it to Canada last year. Or 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 I don't think the year before. Or at least if he did, they didn't show him on the TVs because I remember looking like specifically like, oh, like is Eccleston here? He he didn't make it for the last two years in a row. Maybe he would have made it last year, but last year he was involved in all that uh, German trial and court, whatnot. Court business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tied up in litigation. <laughs> but uh, maybe maybe Marciona said, hey, I'm, I'm coming to Canada. You better be there. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, and, but they were all there. Uh, Ron yeah. Dennis was there. You know, and, and anybody that mattered. That, that, that one, what one would say would be like the decision makers of F1, they were readily available in Montreal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and despite that, still to this day, nothing has come out. None, like no big announcements. There's so many. They're big announcements, but they flip flop and nothing's confirmed. Yeah. But I think part, part, something that Mar- Mar- Marchione said was interesting to me was that. So Ferrari, and then like even Mercedes and Honda are completely different than Ferrari because Ferrari, all of their cars, the marketing and stuff like that is synonymous with F1. Ferrari is F1, right? Yeah. All the cars are super fast, powerful racing cars inspired by the F1 technology, whereas Honda sells Civics and Accords. There's one (laughs) in my driveway, 2,580,000 kilometers, every option, black leather. Give me a call. <laughs> well, yeah, Honda makes those type of cars. Mercedes too. They make everything from small coupes to fucking minivans and moving trucks and all yeah. kinds. They make everything. And uh, Re- Renault, like, like eighteen wheelers and stuff. Yeah. Renault doesn't have their own team, but they're making engines. They make small family cars and other sportier cars. And his point was that Red Bull is like <laughs> their product has a gigantic margin compared to a Ferrari. They, right. Their money's not really a concern for. Some of those teams, Red Bull, right. Mercedes, Honda. Ferrari. So f- for Ferrari, it is. It's it's huge for them. That means everything that they need to be racing 
racing, not saving fuel and saving tires and all this shit mm-hmm. that they're doing lately. Yeah, can you? I don't know if you guys wanted to jump to something else, but like, yeah, you, we, I, you guys we, were talking about like enough and This is the first there. time I really sort of saw saw that in action. We're just like, oh, he needs to save his gas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rosberg needs to save his brakes, mm-hmm. and I was like, what? Yeah, okay. You you watch this on TV, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to see a lot of the radio messages. Right? Yeah, at, at the track, you don't you don't really get that. You'll see sometimes they'll show like some race control or whatever, yeah. but you don't get to hear that. And yeah, apparently there's just a lot of calls like, "How come I'm saving fuel?" Yeah, and save, oh, save your gas. Alonso's, Alonso's message down. was yeah, Lando, Alonso What was, was that all about? I couldn't even make it out. Okay, he you said, know what? He said, let me didn't. race. We look like amateurs. Oh, <laughs> good for him, man. Yeah. yeah, that's what he said. He's like, let me. He, when he was like, he was getting lapped and whatever, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But he, when he was in the pack, he's like, he was saying at the end of the race too, like, he's like, um. Basically, I'm just trying to have some fun right now because he knows the car is shit. Yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's a testing year for Honda. I think I think he did know that going in. Yeah, but he's still getting frustrated now. Reddit, Reddit sh- user a, a huggable cactus posted uh, uh, a transcript. So the team said we must save fuel, and Alonso said I don't want to. I don't want to. Already, I have big problems now driving with this, looking like an amateur. So I'd like to race. And then concentrate on the fuel. And that 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 was that was a big one. Yeah. Well, I mean, and then his car the, blew up. Yeah. Both McLarens had to <laughs> retire. Yeah. 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 That was a big update. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Some that, sort of update. That's another thing. All these teams that came with updates here and there. If Ferrari came with updates. Oh, is this the token thing? They, with the, yeah, they okay. they spent some tokens, and I think other teams came with uh, reliability updates. Which have been sort of squashed with the reliability updates. I think I think Mercedes did the reliability update thing, and that's what prompted the whole. Now you need to write down what you're going to change for reliability, and mm. we'll let you know in seven or eight days if we'll allow it or not. Right, that's what we were talking about last week. But, um, but I think Honda might be spending more tokens before Austria. I saw a button on the. I think him and Alonso, <coughs> Button and Alonso, are getting kind of pissed off now. Well, look, because, look at that radio message. I mean, I'm sure that yeah. you know they 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 they're they're paid and they they obviously got to talk like, uh, and I'm sure they're reminded every time that they go on and speak to the media. Don't say that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't say that our car is garbage. You know, we're paying you millions. Please, please, please. You yeah. know, don't don't yeah. bash our cars. But at in least- the in the heat of the moment, he. He went on. He says, "I'm looking like a man, like an amateur here," and it's true. He shouldn't be. Neither of them should be all the way up, uh, at the back of the pack. Yeah. And the fucking, even the the freaking uh, uh, Marussia's finishing races, and they're not. Man. So, yeah, so what does that make him? Those well, are fucking ugly. I want to talk about this got- too, but <laughs> Marussia's running a car from last year that's already proven. But I think, but this was just my point was Button and. Alonso, I think, are pissed, and they weren't saying that stuff in the media, but now they're letting some slip. Like, a week or two ago, or whatever it was, um, uh, damn it, Honda's dude. Uh, uh, Yasuhisha, right? Yes, yeah, Yasuhisha. Uh, he said, um, Honda, st- we're still expecting a win by the end of the year in the podium, maybe around uh, maybe around Britain. But Button said, he, said, no he said, like, basically, in Austria, they'll be arriving... The only one of the only things that'll be the same on the car is the paint job. Is what he's saying. It's like a whole new thing, but we're not getting any podiums this year. That's yeah. what he said. And I don't think he was supposed. Well, to Well, I say mean, that. even when we were there, even for me, I could tell that car was fucked up. Yeah, it you sounded could hear fucked. It. You could, it sounded like it was sick. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I said. This is what I was saying. We, started, we just started making jokes about the car. This is what I said weeks ago, and I couldn't wait to hear it in person. Yeah. What the? F- yeah. That oh, yeah. Was crazy. He's, he's talking shit too, and. Um, Going against, like, Honda made a point to get in the media, like, two or three weeks ago and assure their, I'm sure investors re- the reading the news that, yeah, we're going to get on the podium this year. Don't worry about it. But it's right. like, no, we're not. No. He said that yesterday. Yeah. And, the th- and uh, Takahiro Hachigo, okay. is the, he's the new CEO of Honda. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, uh, the old CEO was uh, kind of kicked out for some corruption oh, allegations fuck. and things like that. Um He's going to be showing up in Austria. Yeah, he's going to come into the, to the next race to see what's up. Yeah. Yeah, he's following in the steps of Marcione. And uh, you got to see your product, right? You got to see in the environment in which it is supposed to succeed in. Yeah, if it's you like don't. when I'm at when I'm at work and everyone's kind of screwing around and then <laughs> you'll you'll hear like here the boss is here the boss is walking around everybody work. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the boss is there then the guy who like the the owner of the company or whatever the boss is there, then you're like oh shit. Uh, you're just like <laughs> looking over your shoulder like 
Working kind of hard, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got one eye on the work, one eye is like trying to find the boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mentality, though. Yeah. He's gonna go see what's what's going on. Yeah, and, and it must be. I mean, remember, remember when we uh, interviewed Toby earlier in the? Oh, by the way, we are going to interview Toby at some point this week, maybe. And we'll let you guys know uh, okay. when that happens. Yeah, let me know. Uh, yeah, he's coming back. Well, he's here in Toronto. He's Talk here. To he's us here again. right now. He's here right now. But he's he's on vacation, so. I don't. I, I don't think he wa- actually wants to uh, get together and talk about F one in, in an official capacity. Of course, yeah, I don't blame the guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, we might be able to like you know sit down and have a beer with him and like talk talk F one. Um, if not, he's he, he's definitely down to come back uh, and and call us in uh, uh, from Stuttgart at some point or another. Um, n- nevertheless, like oh yeah, all all that is well and good, but. Point being is that yeah, if we go back to to what happened in, in, in during the Canadian Grand Prix and then you heard it with all the uh, radio calls about saving fuel and saving brakes and saving this and saving that and the the the, the, the fuel flow and whatnot, <clears throat> all of these new regulations basically that were mm-hmm. introduced a couple of years ago. They, they they were brought into F one with with the purpose of especially the constraints on fuel and mm-hmm. and, and, and 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 everything around it. Were, were made so that, I guess, to, to encourage the engine manufacturers to make an engine that would be reliable. Because that, that, that was the idea, to, to basically to bring the engines to a new era, right? This, right. This, this is actually a thing that Jean Todd pretty much built his platform upon. Jean Todd was the, one of the main orchestrators. He said, he was, he, he was basically, okay, F1 is, you know, with, with these big V10s and V8s, uh, yeah, they it's, used it's, to use like 400 engines a season, a team yeah. or something. Some, <laughs> of, some of the big teams. Yeah, they say it's getting out of control. It's uh, you know too many people are complaining about that. And and back then, <coughs> people were you know the, 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 the same problem. They said that oh you know so, so many people are you know they're, they're 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 maybe not watching anymore. Could it be because it's getting too too ridiculous? So you know uh, how are we gonna fix the sport? We gotta we're gonna bring these new engines to, 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 to the new era and and maybe if we bring these new engines and with the whole talk of uh, making them hybrid and and, one, and bringing all these new technology mm-hmm. that's when Mercedes thought of you know jumping on board an, an F1 and and they were gonna bring uh, big car manufacturers back to F1 um, and this is Jean, this was this was John Todd, Jean Todd's big plan for F1 right. his big idea was these new engines were they're gonna be the future. And I'm sure that in paper and in his Whoops. little little French mind, he <laughs> it, it 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 seemed like the way forward. But what they didn't anticipate is that with all these constraints that the engines have, and and and, and especially uh, having to go uh, through so many races, right? Like there's only five engines per season or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, these these things, it, it, it almost feels like they're barely holding together. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> like you you you. They're running so much on the limit all the time. The technology is, you know, yeah. it's the barely... technology is not the engines. Yeah, well, not yeah, not not the engines, but the, the whole power unit, the, the whole <laughs> That's technology. The whole argument, yeah. right? Yeah, it's not, it's not the engine, but the whole power unit, the, the whole thing, the whole everything that needs to communicate to make it work, mm-hmm. is running on 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 the limit so much of the time that they they keep having to tell the drivers, uh, you know, to. to to, to not basically to not, to not to save not your fuel, save to your not fuel. drive as uh, to not drive flat out, and right. this is this is what we want, right? Yeah. And I think Jean Todd at the beginning, when they were st- when they were having these talks, they could have never anticipated, or or maybe maybe somebody might have brought it up, like, hey, like, won't this make it kind of you know shitty for the drivers? So like like they're gonna have to be harvesting and doing this and and and, and not focusing on the racing. But I'm sure those concerns got quite like well, very quickly muted, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it carried along. And now we're here with the with these new engines that I'm sure are a technological marvel. But they are they are happening some of the racing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we are losing some some great racing and and everybody said so e- much great racing. Yeah. It, it e- was the idea sort of to put more variables into a race it was to make it more relevant for road uh, car road. manufacturers oh i see okay that was the yeah. ideal okay. the yeah. variables was the whole pirelli thing <laughs> with pirelli coming in and with the tires yeah yeah okay because that made F1 a lot of sense asked them to design tires that wear, wear down yeah so that 
if you push them hard, they wear out fast. Yeah. If you co- if you coast see to them, me, you like can, I, you can I like grip. that idea. Yeah, it is, and it is yeah. cool. It worked. The, it, yeah. the Pirelli tires thing worked. It's been working, and I think if they go with the idea that they mentioned a few weeks ago about going with six compounds and let the teams pick, it's gonna work even better. Even okay. better, because then yeah. there's no complaints. Like yeah, like Russia last year, they probably picked the wrong the too hard of tires that they just last the soft tire just lasted they should have gone softer mm. they didn't have data like the teams will be deciding mm. you know i mean we're gonna use the sticky one and go fast and slow right. one and not pit right or and, whatever. and, gonna, that, and that's gonna, gonna help more and that's gonna also um the, that that idea is also gonna gonna help uh in terms of making things like practice uh, even even more exciting to watch right, because they're right, gonna have yeah. to go out there and try the different compounds. Yeah, they're gonna have yeah. to try like they're gonna have to do fast laps on all of them to figure out which Unless one is they actually get rid of the Friday practice like they've been talking. Which about. Which is bullshit. Is, well, I, I, think not, I, think I think that wouldn't work. I think that's gonna work because and, and it's not gonna work for people. It already seems like the there wasn't enough time. Yeah, it already seemed like just by being there, I was I was like, man, that doesn't seem like a whole lot of time. It does in a sense of like, no, you got a thing on uh, Friday and then Saturday and then Sunday's the race. Especially mm. like Friday, it rained. Yeah, and, yeah. Then and that was like half pra- it was Practice gone. is over, your yeah. time's done. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. Hamilton, Merce- kudos to Mercedes for trying to put on a show because mm-hmm. there's no point of them going out on those rain tires. They're yeah. not expecting rain for the race. Right. Then they sent out Hamilton and he's crashed into the wall and red flagged the whole thing. <laughs> and everyone's like, all right. All right, pack, it, pack <laughs> yeah. it up. Yeah, they just packed it up. Hey, it by the up. way, that's what we should have left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looking back, that's what we should have walked uh, walked home from the track. That's lame. <laughs> but, 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 but it's weak. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Fucking weak. <laughs> uh, yeah, this fuel saving is crazy, man. There are so many, so many uh, radio messages about that. And it's lifting and coasting. And it's shitty to watch. Because... They come up to the the braking zone before that. Their foot's already off the gas. They're just like they're just kind of cruising. Then, yeah, they just hit. They coast at the, the end to the, save gas. The problem which with affects F1. the whole cornering. The car slows down more for the right. corner. It's, it's lame. But I think I think that's that's one. That it's part of the big problem on F one, and it, and to me is that it, there's just not that. Like it, not not just that. There's there's a problem with the engines. There's a problem with uh, maybe the, the engine affecting the races. But there's also the like the whole other different problem of of making the the, the sport just oh. well, or, or just making the sport more accessible uh, for 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 cord cutters, for example. Uh, you know, attracting new media, attracting mm-hmm. younger generations into the sport. It's it's a, it's a bunch of factors that are <laughs> colliding almost mm-hmm. at this point. And the people that are on top of F1 are just focusing. On, on what they think that it's the only thing that they can change, which is which is this. Like they're focusing on 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 the engines thing. So so right now the, the big uproar is like, oh the engines. And I'm sure that after this, after <clears throat> after Canada, they're gonna sit down and they're gonna be like, all oh, right, how can we fix this problem with? How can we make the the, the guys uh, race more? And yes, that is true. That that they, they need to fix that. That mm-hmm. that needs to be fixed. They, they the drivers shouldn't be put in that position. Right. It's, it's not it, it, the lifting and coasting is ridiculous. Yeah. Exactly. They they shouldn't be driving like at the speeds that they were driving. They should be battling yeah. all the time. I, but at the same time, they need to address the very real problem that F1 is maybe falling behind in the times in the way that it distributes the product, mm. that it distributes F1 itself. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, 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 they have that problem. That they're, they're too tied up to the old model of distributing video content via network providers. Right. And they're even more tied up in the last. They just keep signing more and more deals, exclusive deals, and all this. Bullshit. That's that's what I'm saying. So they've lost. They, they they don't even want to deal with that part of the problem, which is, in my opinion, as big as as trying to fix the action on the track. Because what if you fix the action on the track, but then by by the time that you're done fixing the action on the track, you turn around, and you find that nobody's watching TV anymore. Yeah. And then what do, <laughs> yeah. What do you do? You're yeah. Like, ah. Fuck. Yeah, exactly. I better just die. <laughs> <laughs> and he will. He will soon. Eggleston will. Yeah. I, I wasn't like saying he should or ought to. <laughs> yeah. But, but time is a fucking evil mistress. I, I, you know how you told me that you, uh, you watched the the pre show and they interviewed Marchione. Yeah. And you thought that he was really cool and he was like very down to earth. Yeah. I, I really hope and, and, I hope so too. I, I hope what I, I said was true. No, no. I I watched I watched the pre-show uh, today. Yeah. Uh, earlier before coming here, and I saw that interview, and it just seems like he he really wants to get 
more involved because like you said yeah for ferrari it it has to it has to be winning ferrari right. has to has to be winning or if, if anything ferrari has to be out there creating some action on the track and challenging for for, for championships yeah. before i heard mark gione say that i hadn't thought of it that way before that yeah that's every other team has all kinds of other cars and they sell it better yeah. margins than ferraris right yeah well Ferrari. something he said that was that sort of shone a light into sort of his thinking mm -hmm. was that uh you know he was they asked something about ecclestone and uh he's like you know we're on the same page in in the sense of that we want to attract new fans we want mm -hmm. to change the sport for the better mm -hmm. but how we do that are where we sort of disagree and we have to be you know sort of creative he didn't say it like that but that mm -hmm. was the the intention is yeah. that like we have to go forward you right know, we can't we can't step backwards we can't look at the past as if it's like the only way to do yeah. it and I'm glad that he that he because in that same interview he he basically made it seem that he's gonna take a more active role and he's mm -hmm. gonna he's definitely gonna you know be I'm sure he's gonna be talking more to Ecclestone he's right. gonna be trying to push things along more that way and hopefully if anything hopefully what happened in Canada uh, was like the sort of kick in the right direction that everybody needed <laughs> like um, I read a, an interesting column that uh, Martin Brundle uh, uh, posted on the uh, Sky, Sp uh, Sky Sports website or something. Um, <clears throat> and he, he was basically saying, like, you know what? Then they, they need that extra kick. Mm -hmm. and, and if this is what prompts everybody to, to, you know, to, to, to analyze uh, what's going on and, and, and actually finally come to, to, to some agreement, then, then so be it. Then, you know, we will... <laughs> then, then let that be the turning point. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, cool stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, I almost yeah. want to say, um, like the the e Formula E that that style, that idea, that philosophy of like changing. Like, I almost would like it to go in that sort of a direction because mm. that would create like the, the whole idea is like the younger generation is more mm. like uh, f not fuel efficiency, but like you know going green, that kind of that mm. kind of shit, right? Uh, I feel like it, that would be beneficial for Formula One uh, mm -hmm. to really, because then, like, imagine like a car company, like maybe not Ferrari, but other ones, like this is where they get to test out the best of the best in terms of like um, battery or you know. Oh, what's so I was saying, Elon Musk should jump into mm -hmm. Formula E. Holy but shit! To be honest, I, th I think the complete opposite. Yeah, of, I, of I can what see you why you'd say that. No, no, I, this is more of like a happy because you know, future thought, but. Yeah, go for okay, it. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go back to fuel for a second because you changed the subject. So, some, some, okay, so one thing I heard, I was sort of skimmed over this uh, blog, I guess, or whatever that Kultai wrote. And he, he was saying that, like, he was concerned this weekend about the lifting and coasting, ruin oh, yeah. the show, ruin the driver's experience. Like, Hamilton got out of the car and said, yeah, it was, it was nothing. No, none of the drivers are sweating. It was a yeah. hot day. Like, you're not... You're not being stressed or pushed. Right. But one, one thing that was important, I think, is that, like, there's fuel saving now. And he's saying there always has been, even when they went back into the refueling days. But it's different now because he said back then you would still save fuel, but you do it by short shifting instead of this lifting and coasting, which okay. I, don't, I don't think you can really <laughs> short shift as much with the uh, electric power, I guess. Mm -hmm. effects. I don't know. The, they need to be revving, I guess, to be extracting heat and all that stuff. And well, and they need the inches and, to last. And then the lifting and coasting is to harvest. Yeah, they're they're, hard, they're hard, slowing the car down with the electric generator. Mm -hmm. You're saying like back then or at any time, it's always faster to drive a car with less fuel near the limit or push it a bit and save fuel mm -hmm. than to drive a car with a full gas tank and go flat out the whole time. It's faster to you'll. Do you, you'll spend less time driving the same distance if you start with less fuel. So there always was fuel saving, mm. but it was even in the refueling era, especially there was different amounts. Some teams would start with three quarters of a tank, and some would start with half and say we'll put in more fuel after. The other team would go further first and then finish the race with a smaller tank. Oh, okay. so it's always been there, but the lifting right. and coasting is bullshit. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, and, interesting. And another thing that um, I th I think I think the fuel limit the flow limit and the tank limit are probably gonna go away hopefully but i don't think that it will happen until the last minute because that'll cause a big uproar in the media mm -hmm. they have to do i think they'll probably decide first that all the teams will agree they'll do it and then announce it 
And then it'll be like, yeah, it's already happening. Mm-hmm. Be, uh, be, to avoid an uproar and having to stop that plan or something. And, or going back. I think they're going to go back. Because something that Echo Stone said in that interview with Ted mm. was... Uh, Ted said something about fuel saving and uh, these battery cars. And like, is it working out like you thought? And he goes, well, you know, the fuel saving thing. We have Formula E now. So the people that want to see that, he said something like, there's that for them to watch. It's, right. There's no fuel. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, I see. Right. I mean, he was kind of, of alluding. I think that he uh, he's like, yeah, you're right, without saying it. Oh yeah. By I like, think oh, it's yeah, gonna go away. The sport. Yeah. I think they're gonna up the fuel size tank again, and I think they're gonna get rid of that flow limit, hmm. but at the last minute, and probably not next year for 2017. No, I would That's why I'm not excited about next year. Like, right. Nothing's <laughs> gonna change. They're all gonna maybe like I don't know. There's not really a huge point of spending a lot of money to update their engine for next year. If right. they're gonna have to come up with a completely new one for the year after, is that yeah, now? If is, they're gonna do that, they might stick with it for 2017, the same engine. But all the other stuff is gonna change, like that the engine controls. They're gonna have to change all the engine maps, torque maps, the gearing, uh, the size of their turbo. Everything's gonna change with the fatter tires and wider cars, right? For sure, a lot of or a lot of that. Oh, will and change. so that's all slated for 2017. 2017. Yeah, for sure, we have we're gonna have wider tires and wider cars. Yeah. That's set. that's basically set. It's interesting to think and that aggressive look. Um, that an ideology sort of leads the sport instead of the technology that goes into the cars. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I find that kind of strange when like it, like you want like your fucking maddest scientist being like, "How the fuck are we gonna make this thing the most?" badass piece of fucking ace around here yeah uh instead we're like no we got to follow like these guys which makes sense i'm not saying otherwise but uh, it's interesting to see Mm -hmm. that it's these ideologies that um push it uh push the sport further than Mm -hmm. the technologies that could be changing it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. something um something i thought was uh, interesting here is uh riva bene did an interview with um with the writers on the weekend and they <coughs> they asked him about exactly what you were just talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny. He said uh, he wa- he wanted, I guess, uh, he likes to cook. <laughs> <laughs> he said uh, the current state of Formula One looks like a lot like MasterChef. MasterChef. Oh, right. I've never seen this show, but I yeah, guess yeah. Uh, they just <clears throat> take some chefs. Okay, I'll read his quote. He goes, I want to use an example from MasterChef. Arriva Bene told Reuters, blah, blah, blah. The Canadian Grand Prix. You cook whatever you can cook with those ingredients and do your best. Yeah. And uh, he's just saying, like, the ingredients in Formula One right now, this is the best they can cook right now. So right. it's like, if, yeah, you want, exactly. if you want to cook something new, and they're right now they're using old ideas, or a lot of the new ideas he's right. saying are old ideas that they're trying to bring back. Mm-hmm. He's like, if you want new... De- here, the... The novelty. This is probably the reason why the novelty is not that big. He said, mm-hmm. and is still keeping the old DNA. If you have new DNA, you can't. If you don't have new DNA, you can't cook something different. Right. That makes fucking, a lot of sense. That makes so much fucking sense. And when I, <laughs> I, I, I wait, that, wait, hold on. That sounds very, very reasonable. <laughs> yeah, he said, yeah, "What I'm, what I'm trying to do is more or less the same. To talk the language that is not too academic and where I can be myself. I think it's ridiculous sometimes if a team principal is going to talk like an engineer." That's a direct stab at Ron Dennis. Maybe maybe Wolf a bit. Yeah, maybe Wolf. A bit. Wolf. Uh, Ron Dennis is McLaren. McLaren. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's known for doing that. He's known oh, for really? specifically like trying to be too up. He, his speech is very obfuscated. Okay, it's very very yeah. high. Like, you have to cut through much many many layers. Uh, and <laughs> remember when we when we were talking to uh, to Michael Schmidt and I was like I was drunk obviously but, but, but I was like Michael Schmidt like you've talked to Arriba Bene like is he the best thing to happen to F one? <laughs> <laughs> he was basically like maybe not necessarily to F one but definitely to Ferrari. Right. Um. But it's but the thing he's is great. that he's great, man. Somebody he's, with somebody at the top with this F1. and and backed up with uh, by by Marchione who also has a very Get hits uh, a aggressive hits. sort of mindset. Yeah. So these two, uh, maybe hit, maybe they're they're gonna have the clout that's gonna be necessary to to mm. push it along. And and the, the, the thing is that when you talk to somebody like Ecclestone or even Martin Brundle, who can be very progressive sometimes, but uh, on that column that he wrote, um, he he's still talking back and referring back to 
uh, the heydays of the 80s and 90s. And he even, he even says, uh, he wrote it on his column, like, uh, the you know, racing from the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, which in my opinion and many people around the sport was the best era. Yeah, okay, that may have been so, but many, many things have changed. Yeah. Uh, not least the fans. Yeah, right. you know, it, yeah, like it's you like know, twenty five years ago. Yeah. yeah, so so there's there there's no point. I think I think this is this is very. Good. I, I hadn't read the, the this in that Rio Benes said. I didn't uh, get a chance to read the whole article, but I saw a bunch of quotes that, that he said. That's very and smart. He yeah, said, he you said, know what? If you want to fix F one, just uh, it has to be uh, ground up. Everything everything has to change. That's what he said here. I I read articles after the strategy group that said this isn't a revolution. All these new proposals, the blah blah. He said they're gonna find ideas from the past, but. These are the ingredients they put in front of us. Going mm -hmm. back to Master Oh, Chef. fuck. Yeah. But uh, as, uh, another small quote. Uh, if you have the NHL, NBA, NFL, and you know the rules are very simple. They're adapted year after year to the show. He said, here, it's a show that has to adapt to the rules, and I think that's wrong. Ah, fantastic. Beautiful. Wow, yeah, well said. That's what he said. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. He, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy. Like, Hats off. Like Hats off to Attitude him. and everything. Yeah, yeah, good. Like what he said, uh, going back to Montreal for a second, what he said about uh, about Raikkonen's crash, because uh, right after the race, mm. he, he had a quote. Uh, you throw away a, po a podium, right? No excuses. The podium was thrown away. Mm. But then today, I guess he, maybe he got in trouble today, Ferrari put out a separate statement that said it wasn't his fault and that they had used a, a more aggressive uh, engine map and it caught him off guard. Mm. Whatever. Is that is that just fluff? Is that just yeah? I think so. Okay. He would have been. Wouldn't he have the same map the whole weekend or the other like fifty right, laps before right. he spun out? Now is it, yeah. uh, how, how he different? He was caught off guard. He was. He wasn't. He wasn't. <clears throat> probably just he like like he wasn't the same. The, Kimi twitched as out before. and touched his foot or so, touch his foot down or right. give it too much gas for a second. Who knows? But I mean, what's is there like a? I'm not sure if we would know this, but is there a huge difference between Raikkonen's car and Vettel's car? Apparently not. Well, not this weekend. Uh, they are pretty much driving the same thing. Barcelona, they had different cars, hmm. but each, yeah, this weekend I think they had. Each driver much has has like small nuances okay. that they like. For example, yeah, and, and you can tell that like the, the steering wheel is different, but because the steering yeah. wheel is different, like the steering wheel sometimes reflects um, things that they like in in in, in where they're driving, like uh, brake balance, like. Some like to be more aggressive with the brake balance than other mm. drivers. Some, and and that's why they place it on different locations oh, in the I steering see. wheel. Okay. Even the, like the mechanical setup, the camber and uh, the yeah. tires facing in and out, how much they turn, the the turning. Oh, okay. The, yeah, it's like mouse sensitivity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically for the steering wheel, <laughs> okay. how much uh, motion you get, all kinds of stuff like that. Cool. The suspension, maybe maybe stiffness. Vettel likes his car a little bit more under under theory than over theory. So things like that, small nuances that that have to do with how the driver likes to drive. Mm -hmm. a, a major s steering wheel difference is uh, Hamilton's and Rosberg's. If you oh, look really? at both of them. Like Hamilton's looks a lot like his did at McLaren because mm -hmm. I guess it's a, instead of relearning forty new buttons, he. Just, they just copied a lot of it <laughs> and uh, used like the same colors and type of thing. Right, their right. their twos look way different. Mm. But Hamilton uh, maybe uh, more similar now they've been together longer. But no, one well one cool thing that I like about their you know the differences in, in between their 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 steering is that you can also get like a little bit of an insight as to the the mind of the driver. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, you know the, how the steering wheel has uh, those knobs in the middle they can yeah. turn. Um, Rosberg's knobs are graduated and they have they have like they have numbers all, oh, of, them, okay. all of them have numbers right uh whereas uh hamilton's they're basically like like a, like volume, a dial like a dial like oh. going up without without any numbers it just go like <laughs> Ooh. yeah i didn't notice that yeah or the force is with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah, i don't know like but you know, you know what I mean. Like maybe that's that that goes to show, like you know, the thought process that each driver has is, is different, and because of that, certain things in the car have to be different. Okay. But yeah, like 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 Danny said, I guess uh, the the cars, like in terms of the engine and the aerodynamics, it's they're mostly the same. Do so you remember like Thursday when we went to the open track day? We were walking yep. down the pit. I think it was uh, Sauber. They had well, they all have their wings and stuff on display. Oh yeah, that's right. Remember they had but you rack. noticed it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they had a rack of like six wings and. Five of them are the same, and one was different, mm -hmm. which 
So they probably th- test it, trying to test a new wing. So on Friday, they would have put that on one of the cars and send it around, or maybe even put it on both cars mm. and see which driver likes it. And that's, okay. that's what happened at Barcelona was that Ferrari had one set of the new wing. And, uh, and, and a, few bi- a few different bits, actually. Yeah, they had a few other bits, but whatever. Mm. The main wing is the most noticeable, whatever. So they tested it with Vettel. And uh, I guess he it was better for him. So for the race, he got the new wing. And okay. Raikkonen was stuck with the old one. But I guess for the next race, they probably made more of the right. upgrade. Or whatever one. they sort of needed. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a completely... For Canada, it might have been a completely different wing because right. the track is I think, so different. I think Vettel made that more exciting. Yeah, his was the yes. best performance. It yeah. Came from the yeah. Back. It, was, it was the coolest thing to, to see. You're like, oh, fuck. Because like, you know it's a fast car. You know it's a good yeah. driver. And yeah. you're like, this is going to be... That That was exciting to yeah. see. Yeah, he wasn't really saving. Yeah, no. He's just like <laughs> fucking gunning it, of course, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was more that was more, more cool. of that attitude and more of the attitude that Alonso had, I think, is needed. Like from the drivers to just fucking, you know what? I'm at the back. I'm just gonna race. Yeah, fuck that. Because in the back of his mind, he must have known that this car wasn't gonna finish. And and it's and it's and it's sad. I mean, well, obviously, I'm 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 an Alonso fan. I I would like to see him leave this sport with more than the two championships that he has. Right. Because I I feel like. I I strongly believe that he deserves more than the, the mm-hmm. those two championships because I'm not sure that Lewis is better than him. For example, but really? Lewis has more. Uh, well, yeah, Lewis now has two championships, and but he's headed to the third championship. Maybe he should have negotiated his own contract. And you know. <laughs> are, are the champions like the, the so whole year, so. or or is it like a, a podium? No, podium is just a. Oh, when, when you say championship, it's like a the whole year. Yeah, oh, the, the championship is a whole year. So Alonso's won two. Alonso's won two. Two oh. whole years. Yeah. yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. With whom? With uh, Renault. Oh. He, but Team Renault was completely different. Team Renault is what is today, I guess, uh, Lotus. But they they were they had a way bigger budget and and a way more colorful per- personality on top with uh, um what was that crazy guy's name that was the, the head of uh, of uh, that 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 crazy Italian. Uh, we've yeah. talked about him on the, on the show before anyway yeah but it it, it it was a different team it just happens to be based at the same base in mm-hmm. uh in stone but yeah he he had uh and actually uh to this day if you look at the the lotus uh car right on the top right before in front of the cockpit there's three stars mm-hmm. for the three championships that the team that's based in Enstone has won ah. two of those are alonso's championships oh, fuck yeah so and how how long ago was that? Oh five and oh six. Oh damn! Oh yeah. two years in a row. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was. Uh, yeah, they're killing it for a while. But it was it was basically like, uh, uh, Alonso was was crazy because he was he was the, the the driver that he he was a combo breaker. Yeah. Because it was five <laughs> years in a row of Michael Schumacher winning right. and then Alonso. Right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh. But 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 yeah. Since then he he moved to Ferrari and um you you. You saw, like, in all the publications, it was like, oh, you know, Alonso and Ferrari, this is going to be, like, the dream team to match. Right. Well, nothing came out of that. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> well, yeah. And oh, the, the, I remember was, talking about it yeah. now. It was, yeah, so it was five years of his life wasted, and now it's looking like it's going to be hard till the rest of his career. <laughs> and I don't, like, just from from this performance right now that, that, uh, uh, that they had in both Monaco and Montreal, so they were, they were nowhere... In in the track that was supposed to suit him a little better because it, it wasn't it, it didn't have a, a, a lot of requirements in terms of in terms of top power from the engine right. which was Monaco. I mean Jensen got up there and got some points, but then Alonso's engine broke and has broken three three races in a row. Oh, right. Fuck. Uh, so so then and and there and you could say that ha- that part of why Jensen was there was kind of a fluke. It was kind of luck. For anyone that didn't know this. The only three cars that haven't scored any points this year are, are the two Manners and Alonso. Oh no! Alonso's car hasn't. Yeah. He's barely made it to the end of most of the time. Yeah, it's yeah. Crazy. It's it's bad, man. It's bad, and and I'm sure that if well, if this was Malaysia, you know, if this was China at the beginning of the year, it would be a completely different story. But right now, we're past Spain. We're past Monaco. It's a Canadian Grand Prix at this point. Like the 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 engines. Their engines should be better than that. Mm-hmm. Sh- they shouldn't be breaking left, right, and center. Yeah, the almost, car itself should be better too. We're almost a third of the uh, way into the season. Well, if you count all the testing, we're 
We're probably about a third of the way through the season now. Yeah. So it, it it should be better, and 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 McLaren really needs to step it up, and probably that's why that guy from Honda is coming because he's Takahiro yeah. Hashigo. Yeah, he's the he's the new CEO of Honda. You know what else? Uh, um, I forgot who it is that that was saying this. If it was uh, either Ted Kravitz or um, or Brundle in the pre-show or post-show, I don't know. I, I don't remember. But um, they're saying now that Gerhard Berger. You know how he's been hanging around uh, over the past th uh, three Grand Prix? Is that maybe he is going to be put in uh, in Ron Dennis's position. Hmm. Like maybe some high, higher ups even than Ron Dennis is a McLaren. I'm just not having any of Ron's shit anymore. Maybe. Yeah. I thought that's one thing. I, I, uh, I tried to make this point earlier. I think it slipped my mind. Uh, that Honda, at least, and McLaren... Like maybe maybe he's, he's obviously he's not doing well, but they've managed to keep their struggle and stuff mostly out of the media. It's right. it's yeah. leaking a bit now with Button and Alonso getting obviously upset with their performance. They're, <laughs> they're both they both want to be at the top, but uh, they managed to keep that out of the media compared to Red Bull, Renault. Oh, well, they're, they're, that's a shit show. Yeah, that's a mess. They're 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 been talking fighting shit, and fighting back shit and forth. And all the really? Time. Yeah. Yeah. Recently. Yeah, this year since the whole the whole year yeah, yeah. and then now their their drivers are getting into it too ricardo oh, said so at the end of the race like he's like what's what the hell's going on like the car is supposed to be getting better but it's i think it's worse now than it was last year oh my god yeah he's, he, he, <laughs> oh my god he said, he said he's comparing this this year's car to the car he drove two years ago when he was in the toro rosso yeah i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is uh, which that that year was basically a back marker team yeah no, well, they they managed to keep catch up with their their, their big sister, sister team, team. Yeah. The, the big sister team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess this kind of segues into the last topic I have for today. Anyways, the customer, sorry, franchise cars. Oh, is this is this actually happening? Because I I saw a tweet about it, but I, I I haven't seen any official documents saying that this is what's happening. Personally, from all like the dozens of stories I read about this, I think that what's happening is that. The engine manufacturers mm -hmm. really want it to happen, but nobody else does. Because they want, yeah, because they they want their business in F1 to be a little bit more lucrative. Right? Yeah, because Wolf is the only guy. Total Wolf from Mercedes is the only guy that's gone into the media and said um, he said, and I think that he's probably softening the actual reason. He's like, we need this for a what if situ situation, for a what if scenario. He's like, some teams might not survive, especially the transition to 2017, like right. retooling everything. Uh, it's going to be expensive, obviously. And this is for a what if situation. For, so those teams could buy one of our cars and put as much of their own stuff, I guess, on as they want it. But like the numbers and everything just sounds fishy. It sounds like shit. Like, like they just like they pulled want, it up out of the eyes. Yeah. yeah like so 50 the, million be, a year. Doesn't matter which team you buy this franchise car from it's 50 million euro for the year and i guess that gives you your chassis everything attached to that and your engines Jesus. probably the the max which is four right you probably have to pay more for extra ones which <laughs> how many inevitably will blow up uh how many engine manufacturers are in f1 three right now four four right four now. right now four, four. yeah Four right now. Honda just came back. Last year was okay, three. So, right. okay. yeah, so we got Mercedes. Yeah. Ferrari. Yeah. Renault. Okay. Honda. All right. And then okay, so where does Red Bull get their car from? Renault. Red Bull. Okay, Renault. Red Bull and Toro Rosso are running Renaults. They're the only team that. And they're the only ones that were. They were Renault was super tied in tied up with Lotus before they used okay. to be, uh, but Lotus switched to Ferraris because reliability issues of the Renaults and. Or sorry, they switched to Mercedes because Mercedes is killing it. Right. Williams runs a Mercedes. Mercedes runs a Mercedes. Honda is the only so. team that runs. Uh, it's Honda McLaren is the yep. only team running Hondas right now. But we, as we talked about last week, there's this uh, team proposal, team tender going out, and there's a bunch of speculation that Honda has sort of a team in I think GP2 called ART Racing or okay. Art Racing that yeah, yeah, they yeah. want to step up and be a Honda customer. Oh shit. Maybe not a franchise car, but their engines right. at least. Yeah. So Honda needs more engines out there to get more data. Yeah, right, right? absolutely. They're not gonna. They're not gonna sell any to any of the established teams. But for with <laughs> yeah. the good, yeah. they're not. not right they're now. like, no, we're good guys. Yeah. <laughs> I really hope that Honda is, does what they said though. That 
it was a mistake for them to ever leave and that they'll never leave again. Yeah. I hope that's So this true. is their first year back and it's been like a big, big dud. Yes. Yeah, we, so yeah, far. Their cars but I mean, up. like you can only go up? They, they uh, yeah. can only go up, yeah. They did, and they, Honda has some of the best engineers. I'm sure. Yeah, in the world, they really. Make I mean, some of the, the most Honda, reliable cars that you can buy. Honda is yeah. a big conglomerate in Japan. They like they have you know they, they make Asimo right like yeah. they, they 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 they're involved in all kinds yeah, of electronics and factory yeah. machines. I remember you guys saying um, and all well, this is stuff. Honda and McLaren, right? Mm. And th- these it's two like partnership, this yeah. partnership, right? And obviously there might be miscommunications, oh, yeah. as it were. Yeah, for sure. Well, we remember talking to Toby, and he said like, oh, you know. Working with like the British are hard enough to work with, and now there's <laughs> Japanese like engineers. Japanese who are well, traditionally or stereotypically, I guess, t- more timid people and for the most part. And the British are brutish. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I want to go for a pint and punch a shit out of each other. <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> like, a British attitude, yeah. Okay. Yeah, w- without even being a dick, just being more, I think, more honest people. Yeah, just speaking what's on your mind for the most yeah. part. What British people do. Compared to Japanese. Yeah. There was uh, some articles and talk about this at the start of the season and how it was a big transition for them mm-hmm. to work, <laughs> start working with Japanese people instead. But I, don't, I don't think it's going to happen. This but year. A- apparently after the race, um, nobody really talked about it, but some photographers caught um, Williams, or sorry, not Williams, um, Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, and Red Bull, the heads of all, and the two heads of McLaren Honda, having a meeting, which was allegedly about customer cars, Ooh. and that the other strategy group teams, and including Williams, Williams and Force India, were excluded from that meeting. Interesting. And, and of course, all the teams that would be customers, like, um, I guess, uh, Toro Rosso and um, Lotus, etc. Right, right. It's, Lotus is interesting, too, because they, like a couple of years back, they were right at the top. They almost got a title again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were killing in the year oh, when, really? when they had when the, they, they had Kimi Raikkonen. When the first year that Kimi Raikkonen came back to the sport, he was he was racing for Lotus and he was up there. He was especially I think it was twenty eleven with the blown diffusers. Oh, like, okay, that theirs, was yeah, this was brilliant. It was working. The car had crazy like in the cornering yeah. so much downforce. Oh, what the, I don't know. I, I, we probably told you this before, but they were basic. They took their exhaust pipes, yeah. and blew them forward. So basically, like you're driving really fast, yeah. and a whole bunch of air is going over the car, yeah. and a bunch of it goes in the hole, yeah. burned by the engine, and then all the exhaust gases and everything, this dense air, goes out the exhaust to the front of the car and goes back over the car again with the air you're driving through. Oh. oh. So if you don't know what the blown diffusers was, okay. they, they're banned now, but what okay. they were doing because of the fuel flow requirements, what they were doing was they'd come up to a corner, brake, and when they take their foot off of the throttle, the transmission, I guess, would disengage somehow and the engine would rev up to full blast and they'd push as much air as they could. Well, Under the car. Yeah, Lotus was doing it to the to the front and back. Most of the teams were blowing their diffuser. They're blowing it like back over a wing, basically. Right. Yeah. Holy shit. Just to crazy. create more downforce around the corners that way. But that got banned. Yeah, it got, it got banned. Yeah. And the, the same the same year, they were still using F ducts and different variations of that type of thing that were banned like from weekend to weekend on and off. Where, like, uh, they had these like basically like openings that air would get sucked into, and then they had like a hose that went through the car and forced that that air like just air going over the car twice. Holy shit. Yeah, they did some crazy stuff. But yeah, Lotus was close but to see, the title it, then, and now they're close to maybe selling to Renault or quitting. Holy shit. Well, that, well, that seems like that's when we were what, talking about, sorry, uh, when we were talking about how, you know, the philosophy mm-hmm. is the, what directs it, not the technology. Because that sounds fucking cool. That sounds like they're like, okay, what can we do? So cool. What can we do the, to make our car faster? And that's like, that's exciting to see, because you're like, holy shit, what did they do? I think, right. you know what I, mean? I think maybe you had to understand it like mm. that to appreciate it where right. somebody casually watching would be like because the cars so- kind of sounded like the honda does now oh, okay because they'd yeah. come off the gas and they'd be cornering but then you'd hear like a because uh, okay. the engine's disengaged but it's revving to blow air through mm. it's, it's they sounded really weird yeah, like yeah. especially it was, it was, like a whistle in it or especially something especially the lotus <laughs> see, see if you can youtube the lotus blown diffuser sound because the, the i thought honestly that sound was incredible that was the one of the best sounding cars. Yeah. Yeah, it had like a <laughs> rumble to it. Now, it wasn't quite like that <laughs> to Honda, okay. Honda sound. But I, I don't think the customer cars thing is going to happen. And Lotus seems to be doing well with their advertising department. 
Like they had the Mad Max car and yeah, they've been mm. getting sponsors. Manor had a sponsor. Airbnb. I think that was a one-off. Yeah, yeah it was just for that race. What year would have this been? 2011. 2011. Was it? Was it 2011? Oh no. I think it was. It was 11 or 12. It might have been 2012. Oh. There. Yeah. Oh, Did you hear that sound? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sounds fucking. Like when, you, when you downshift the car, the revs jump up. Right. We use all that. Oh, is that uh, Montreal? Hey, yeah, that's Canada. <laughs> they sound really intense. These are worth still like 18, 19,000. Yeah, that coming through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's wait, not the most wait, attractive. Wait, thing. wait till we see the Lotus here. What it was, what it was doing. That's what I mean. I think you have to understand okay. the sound to be yeah. like, wow, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Whereas otherwise, you might be thinking like, whoa, what, what was that? <laughs> There's the Lotus. Oh no, no, that's for Sophia. Oh, yeah. Come on, Lotus. There sounded like. <laughs> All the way, all the way around the corner. <laughs> I think especially with the onboards, because the exhaust was coming back in front of the ca- in front of the microphone. Mm-hmm. The True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you'll you'll hear it here for sure. That's another. What was that yeah. at that point? That was a Sauber. Yeah, the, the white the white Saubers back right there. Yeah. There, they'd be another potential franchise team buyer, but they've been very mm-hmm. against it as well. Yeah, Sauber is like it's just their their philosophy is that they're constructors. Yeah, even them too. They didn't come as close as Lotus, but they were doing very well in 2011-12 era. Well, yeah, it was say like, very well, but quite well. No, no, pretty well. Like pretty they were cool. out of the midfielders, they were up there. It, yeah, do this one. This one. Yeah. Plus, you get to see the India racetrack, which they don't use anymore. Wait, is this is this, is this like on the on the screen? No, no, good. <laughs> yeah, this we can't show. Yeah. We can watch it. Yeah. But the sound's coming in. Mm-hmm. That's fine. I hope that's Nobody fine. knows where the sound's coming from. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. This India track, I thought was TV. really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing happened there, buddy. Sorry. Yeah, well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Let's see, though. Oh, God. Yeah, there you go. Gunshot. It's the higher speed corner there. Yeah, the idea. Whoever came up with that idea was a genius, man. Yeah. yeah. But see, honestly, it sounds like a mosquito. This, this set of corners here is amazing, man. You get the left and right here again. I really hope they go back to India. Yeah, this I looks love this really track, cool. Man. I love this track. Well, Bernie gave him an open invitation to return for next year. Really? Last week, yeah. They gotta come up with the money. They had they had a cool track, uh, but it this track out. is badass, man. Right? Well, it, ter- it. it turned out that they just somehow the race promoters just weren't promoting it enough, or they didn't find a way yeah, to, enough to attract somehow. enough Indian interest. Now there's no really Indian drivers in there anymore. Well, there are none. Yeah, where there were before. Yeah, that was cool, man. Yeah, really, really cool. Really, yeah. I do enjoy but, the sound of them now. Yeah, yeah, they do sound really cool. Yeah, they sound nice. Like honestly, <laughs> going when those that was mind blowing to hear those cars go by yeah those all the v8s but yeah I, I couldn't imagine the v10 era yeah but, but compared to now like it's it's cool man you don't need yeah. headphones yeah. or earplugs yeah. on. yeah yeah you can just enjoy it and it's still yeah. loud and sounds really cool you can yeah. hear the tires squealing and the turbo and yeah. The, yeah yeah you yeah, can you can cool. you can even like appreciate more of like the the the, the drivers like driving mm-hmm. uh and and another thing like uh so on on sunday uh my girlfriend came to the track mm-hmm. um and and i was she, surprised then <laughs> she had a good time yeah she had a good time well she had a, yeah she had a very good time um and but but she was saying that because uh, she's, she's been to a nascar event mm-hmm. before oh. uh with her family <laughs> and, and <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, she obviously like she, she knew that she was gonna like f1 better but even like when we were talking about the noise levels yeah. she was like you know what like 
I think it's cool because I'm talking to you right now, and I yeah. couldn't be talking to you. And like, she was like, "Well, if even with NASCAR, you can't really talk, and like, you're yeah. just like making like weird noises and like yelling at people." She's like, "No, this is way more enjoyable. Yeah, just from so. that, from that." And we, well, they, they, this whole year they opened a new, uh, a second popular grandstand in Montreal, and they had a whole other grandstand that was assigned for for family only, and, and the and, family zone, and the family zone. So we, whole, we, saw, like, we saw tons of kids around. Yeah, I remember that, that we, we saw didn't like see the blow up bouncy castle and slides yeah, and yeah. face painting that, and all, that all. wasn't there before because uh, people would be too scared to bring their kids like you know, having their fucking yeah. ears blown off yeah you couldn't and the, behind us in the race was that uh, the Mercedes the Patronas family these guys oh, yeah. it was to be a Malaysian family because yeah. they were all dressed in turquoise and silver color coded <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you were saying they had some little kids there like <laughs> three, four, five years old yeah. wow and yeah. they they just had the earmuffs on but they were yeah. like eh. they didn't, weren't paying attention to it <laughs> <as well. laughs> I hope Lotus wins. <laughs> like, no, man. No. <laughs> wrong, first, wrong team. <laughs> Mercedes. But my, my final point about the customer cars is going back again to the interview with Ted, Ted Kravitz. He asked him about that, and he said, uh, he's, he said, well, he's like, customer teams, it can't happen. Yeah. He said it like really quiet and subtle, but he's like, that's it's not really F1, I think, was the tone in his voice. Right. He said, they can't happen. So that's why I think I think it's more mostly the teams that are looking for some kind of backup in case other teams leave and they can't because right now they're selling the engines to all the other teams. Anyway. Right. Anyways, they, they got a huge amount of money coming in. Yeah. And that's how they are the best. Right. Because they spend all that money on their cars. But for the sport and everything, I don't think. And it, nobody like, nobody wants it. Right. Yeah. No, it, it seemed... I don't think I know <laughs> <laughs> who wants it except whoever's building the cars. Right. Yeah. It's more money for them, obviously. But I mean, maybe Honda so they can anthropomorphize more engines. Oh, can we take a look at this? Yeah, let's throw this up <sighs> quick. Let's have a funny break because <laughs> this is hilarious. I found this on the weekend. Uh, <laughs> Honda. <laughs> you were talking about this in Montreal. Yeah. Honda has a twitter account and website it's uh honda racing f1.com slash power dash units they have a, a website dot html dot html sure uh and twitter accounts for each engine and during the race they were tweeting as if the tweeter was the engine, engine. itself <laughs> it's, oh, i'm having i'm uh, i'm having some problem with these tires gonna come in for a pit stop you can scroll down and see it, and I, I'm, I, I hope that because that because they're Brit, uh, British and Italian names. I hope it actually was Alonso and Button that named these engines. Like scroll up, like there is the face. The, <laughs> the, so that's supposed the to be Alonso. So that's supposed watching. to be Alonso. Okay. Yeah. And he's named his car Mariano, or his engine is named Mariano. <laughs> <laughs> and Jensen or Button is named his engine Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> but that's Kyle's my, that's my middle but, name if you but, didn't know. But uh, Ky Kyle dies every episode. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this fucking soulless eyes. <laughs> and it's got two turbos. What's going on? <gasps> that's shit true. together. Scroll Kyle. down a bit though. See if you can see the Twitter accounts or any of the other ones. There you go. Uh, if you want to follow on Twitter, Alonso's engine Honda at Honda PU14. There it is. It's got. 12,000 followers. Yeah. Yeah, an Tra engine. Travel, apparently. Travel Tuesday. If you go, could go anywhere to any Grand Prix in the world, which would you pick? <laughs> Monday mo hashtag Monday motivation. My grandfather once told me one must keep chasing one's dreams. <laughs> this is from, from apparently from, from an engine. Alonso's from engine. Mariano. <laughs> <laughs> this is right at the end of the race, June 7th. Uh, we're going to have to retire, and it's very unfortunate. I'm sorry, guys. Very polite engine. <laughs> it does remind me of like a Japanese thing to do. Yeah, because they anthropomorphize everything. Every anything everything. possible. <laughs> yeah, has a personality and voice. And uh, let's look at uh, buttons for a second. I want to see what kind of ridiculous things he's been talking about. <laughs> Packed up and on the move, which is quite fitting because it's hashtag Travel Tuesday. And uh, Randa, his last tweet at the end of the race: We will have to retire for the hashtag Canadian GP. <laughs> it's a 36 lap on these primes, but we're setting personal best sector times. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But, I mean, it, it would it would have to be a quite a guttural noise uh, uh, voice coming out of this engine, yeah. with, like with the random. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look at this fucking picture. This is this is scary. Yeah, look, and the, from the I'm, other, I'm surprised it hasn't transformed into a robot. Mm -hmm. 
It from, looks like a robot head. From the actual website, there's a different angle on this, so they've yeah, they definitely made it scarier. rendered all sorts of angles. Oh yeah, of course they did. <laughs> this is awesome. Sorry, I should silence this telephone. <laughs> my mom, my funny. mom's calling me. Mama. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Um. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I don't know what to even say anymore. No, yeah, I guess we can we can finish on that note. I mean, uh, anything, any any other uh, passing thoughts, Michael, about uh, the Canadian Grand Prix and uh, how good of an experience it was? Oh, it was just awesome, awesome. <laughs> oh, whoa, we're cool. working on putting together, uh, splicing together some more of those videos, yes. or, or at least one more of those. Yeah, we're gonna oh, have yeah. one more video. Thanks for everyone that watched the uh, interview with the Ferrari Hat Guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got separated with you two a bit in that in that uh, open house thing. I missed I missed talking to you. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I'll do. I'll post it up sometime next this week uh, whenever I get time to finish it. Probably maybe Friday. Okay, I'll send it to you guys and you'll, you'll tell me what you think. And Sounds great. Post go it from, up. Go from there. Yeah, and and uh, like we said before, either at one point this week or uh, yeah, either before the the, uh, the coming podcast uh, or you know sometime after. We will be talking again with uh, Toby Gruner, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess we'll be doing a uh, preview show for Austria next week. Yeah. Oh shit! Already. Yeah. Well, it's in two weeks. Two weeks, but I'm actually now next like week. really excited. Nice. I'm like, <laughs> this got me like really, really pumped, and I got to see all the names. And you see, Austria is so different. Oh yeah. From, is it the one with from, the hill? Is there a big hill? In it's it? kind of it's in the it's in sort the of it's on not, a hill. Out in the mountains. Okay, it's sort got, of it's got a big quite hill. a bit of up and down. Yeah. Okay, I think there's nine corners or something, ten okay. depending how you count them. It looks like that. Oh shit! It's the the Red Bull Ring. Red Bull. Oh, right. Red Bull bought their own racetrack. Of course used, they did. <laughs> used to be called the Österreich Ring. Yeah. Österreich. Österreich Ring. Österreich. <laughs> yeah, it used to be. They bought it, revitalized it. Brought it up to FIA grade one. Style. Oh, yeah. It kind of looks like a whale. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this one. Yeah. I think I remember making that joke, too. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be good, though. It's another quick one. Be a bunch of retirements, like fast, like high power. Yeah. It's going to be good. Guys, lots of stuff to come. Uh, what else? Can, can you play us out, DJ? I sure can. Yeah. Should be good. Oh, Twitter, you know, whatever. Just... You guys, follow us. Go flat on fear .com. We got we, 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 and on our uh, we post a video on our YouTube account. Yeah. If, if you're yeah. listening, like if you, you stop the out. Ah. Turn down your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you guys. That's all you guys. All I need. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.